Hello, this is Harlan. Welcome to the preview for my wet felting with a resist birdhouse class. This is a beginner's class that will teach you how to wet felt using a resist. In this class, we'll be making birdhouses, which are quite practical for small birds such as chickadees. The resist will allow us to make the hollow birdhouse in one seamless piece. I'm in the process of teaching myself wet felting, and wet felting with a resist is an important skill to learn and opens up many creative possibilities. Creating birdhouses was a fun way to begin learning wet felting with a resist. If this is your first time taking a class on Craft Art EDU, I highly recommend that you watch Donna Cato's Making the Most of Your Craft Art EDU class. In part one of this class, you'll learn how to create the ties for the birdhouse. I'll discuss different methods of construction. I'll discuss laying out the fibers, folding the fibers tightly against the resist and why that is important, and decorating the birdhouse. In part two, I'll teach you how to roll the birdhouse to uniformly shrink the fibers, how to remove the resist, palming, a vinegar rinse, and inflating the birdhouse with a balloon. Thank you for watching the preview for my Wet Felting with a Resist birdhouse class. If you would like to take this class, click Add to Cart. For Craft Art EDU, this is Harlan. For this class, you're going to need a workspace which will allow you to work with hot water. You're going to need less, just a little less than two ounces of fiber. In the class, I will be using merino, but you could use other types of fiber, including bat or core fiber. You'll need thin foam packaging sheet to make the template. You'll need bubble wrap with small bubbles, a reed placemat, which is sometimes called a bamboo placemat. You'll need tool or some other form of sheer synthetic cloth or lace. I've even seen plastic screening used for this purpose. You'll need balloons. Towel is optional, but very handy. You'll need rubber bands, scissors, uh, dish washing soap, not hand soap, dish soap, and vinegar. I'm Donna Cato, one of the founders of Craft Art EDU. I'm also a Craft Art EDU teacher. I'm sure you enjoyed watching the preview for the preceding class, but did you know? Your class has a 100% money-back guarantee. If you're not happy, we aren't either, and we'll refund that class fee. It's easy to contact your teacher through our class question and answer function. Just click the white up arrow on the navigation bar, type your question, and it'll be emailed to your teacher. We always say, our classes are all the time on your time. You have unlimited time and unlimited views of your class. Our goal is to provide you with instructions from the best teachers in the most efficient and comprehensive way possible. We want to be that step up in your learning. For this class, you're going to need a workspace which will allow you to work with hot water. You're going to need less, just a little less than two ounces of fiber. In the class, I will be using merino, but you could use other types of fiber, including bat or core fiber. You'll need thin foam packaging sheet to make the template. 
You'll need bubble wrap with small bubbles, a reed placemat, which is sometimes called a bamboo placemat. You'll need tulle or some other form of sheer synthetic cloth or lace. I've even seen plastic screening used for this purpose. You'll need balloons. Towel is optional, but very handy. You'll need rubber bands, scissors, uh, dish washing soap, not hand soap, dish soap, and vinegar. For this project, you will need a workspace which will allow you to work with hot water. I personally have a large board covered with plastic bags set up at my craft room sink. You might choose to work in a large tray pan and have your water available in bowls or bottles. Just find some place you can work with water and not have it damage tabletops or whatever. To make these birdhouses, you can use just about any form of fiber. On the left you see bat fiber, which I often call core fiber. This is fiber that has been prepared to use in quilts and comforters. The fibers are generally a mix of wool from different breeds of sheep. It can take a little more effort to wet fat, but it's worth the effort. On the right is merino in the form I call ropes and is also called tops. Merino is a very fine fiber and it wet felts beautifully. It's one of the easiest fibers to wet felt, but being so fine you will need many more layers of merino to achieve a suitable thickness. In this class I'll be showing you how to make the birdhouses using merino. If you decide to use bat fiber, you'd only need one good layer per side of the resist instead of the many layers needed with merino. I'm sure you just want to jump right in and begin making the birdhouse, but first we need to make ties for the birdhouse. Fortunately, it doesn't take much time to make. To make ties for the birdhouse, you'll need a length of merino about two feet long. Divide that lengthwise into four pieces. There's a video on the next page that shows you how to weld felt the ties. Depending on where and how you want to hang your birdhouses, these ties may be longer than you need. In this video, I'll show you how to uh, wet felt the fiber ties for the birdhouses. It's, it's very simple. I've used about a two foot length of the fiber, which I divided it lengthwise into four roughly equal parts. And then I uh, dunk a length into hot soapy water, as you see, and I'm rubbing down the length between my palms. And after I've done that, I'll ball it up and roll it like a meatball in my, in my palms. And then I'll separate uh, the fiber out there. I'll dunk it again and repeat the process. And it's a very simple way to wet felt ties for the birdhouses. And I'll let you watch the rest of the video without commentary.
Place your resist on your work surface. Place bubble wrap over the resist with the bubble side down. You can see the resist through the bubble wrap well enough to use it as a guide for laying out the fibers. Tear off lengths of fiber and begin laying it over where you can see the resist under the bubble wrap. The fibers should extend beyond the resist edge. You want nice, even coverage with the fibers all running in one particular direction. As seen here, these fibers run diagonally with a rightward slant. Now lay a second layer of fiber over the first, with the fibers laying perpendicular to the first layer. Here, the fibers have a leftward slant. You want nice, even coverage. So far, we've laid out two layers of fiber, the lighter purple and this darker purple. You need more layers than that for a birdhouse. You need at least four layers, and maybe even five if you're using merino or something similar. Now, there's two basic ways to do this. Method one would be to continue adding additional layers of fiber now until you have four or five dry layers of fiber, also you know, alternating perpendicular layout. Method two would be to gently wet felt these two layers together, continue to the next steps, and then later to repeat all these steps to add the additional layers of fiber. Both methods work equally well, and which to choose is mostly a matter of whether or not you like working with a lot of layers of fiber at one time. Gently pat down the fibers with your hands. You're basically just trying to remove excess air in the fibers. Lay tool over the fibers and wet with hot water that has a little bit of dishwashing soap in it. A little bit of soap will help to break the surface tension on the fibers and allow it to absorb the water more easily. I have a short video on the next page that shows wetting the fibers. Now this video was made for another class with a different project, but the process is the same. And I've chosen to use a plastic bag that I've dunked into hot water to dribble water onto my surface. I find that uh, method works very well. A sponge would probably work as well. I don't like the squirt guns or spray bottle technique. I'm patting this in place. Now I'm putting soap on my hands, rubbing it over all my hands, and then patting the fiber down. Now that your fibers are wet, Gently remove the tool. The feathery edges of the fiber are going to want to stick to the tool, so gently peel the fiber off the tool as you remove it. Remove the resist from under the bubble wrap and place it in the center of your wet fiber layers as shown. Position the ties you wet felted earlier at the peak of the resist. Gently fold the excess fibers over the resist. You want the fibers to be tight against the edge of the resist. Add fiber layers to this side of the resist. Now you'll either be laying out four or five layers if you were following method one, or you'll be laying out two layers of fiber if you're following method two. Remember that each layer should be laid perpendicular to the previous layer. Cover the fibers with tulle. Wet the fibers and pat them down until all the fibers are saturated. Using just a little bit of dish soap, you can make saturating the fibers easier. Place another piece of bubble wrap over your project with the bubbles facing the project. Turn the whole piece, bubble wraps and all, over. 
peel off the top layer of bubble wrap. And the fibers are going to want to stick to it, and you're going to have to gently roll them back, peel them back from the bubble wrap as you remove it. Fold the excess fibers so that they are tight against the edge of the resist. Now, if you are following method one and have laid out four or five layers of fiber on each side of the resist, you could now continue on to the next step. If you were following method two, where you were laying out only two layers of fiber per side at a time, you would now go back and repeat adding two more layers of fiber to each side of the resist. By this time, the hot water you added previously has probably gotten cold. You can use a towel to blot up as much of the cold water as possible and then add more hot water. With all your layers in place around the resist, you can now decorate the birdhouse by adding colorful fibers. The more care you take in placing your design, the more detail you can create, but it's probably best to do something simple and fun. Depending on where you eventually hang your birdhouse and the exposure to ultraviolet light it will receive, there is a chance that the colors will fade over time. On the following page, I have a video showing how to start wet felting the surface of the birdhouse. This is a video that I made for another class. Obviously, the project is different, but some of the techniques, especially right now, are exactly the same. This is fiber that has been saturated with hot water, and um, I've applied decoration, and now I want to start adhering those decorative fibers to the fiber layers. I applied previously. I've added soap to my fingers and I begin to gently, gently massage the surface. You're barely touching it uh, at the start of this process and as the fibers begin to adhere you'll be able to increase the amount of pressure. Now every now and then you need to lift your tool and watch on the left hand side of the screen how I fold back peel back the fibers that are sticking to the tool. Um, you don't want any fibers working their way through the tool so that the tool actually becomes attached. So every now and then you lift the tool and this peeling the fibers back process. Now I'm going to lay the tool back down and because I've begun this adhering of the decorative fibers, I can apply greater pressure than I was originally. And as you'll notice, I'm, I'm beginning to get uh, more suds than I really wanted. So I'm going to show you my solution for that. I'm going to roll this whole piece up and I'm going to hold it under the faucet in my sink. Now, when you do this with the birdhouses, of course, you'll have also the bubble wrap. Um, but the process is the same and it helps give you hot water again and to remove some of the excess soap. After securing the decorative fibers to one side of the birdhouse, you can turn the piece over to decorate the other side. You can see in the photo on the left that I have wisps of green fiber extending beyond the piece from decorating the previous side. I'll fold those over to the side and incorporate them into a very loose design. After adding the directions, cover the piece with tulle and then gently massage the fibers with hot water and some dish soap. Keep your fibers tight against the edge of your resist. 
When you add the hot water and start gently massaging the piece, the fibers may seem to expand a little and not be as tight against the resist as you previously laid them to be. Just gently ease that excess towards the middle and continue massaging the fibers. That expansion of fibers will shrink and you will once again have your fibers tight against the edge of the resist. You should be wondering why that's important and I'll show you why on the next page. If you don't keep your fiber tight against the edge of the resist, the fibers can start to felt together and you'll end up with ridges. If you happen to end up with some ridges, it won't make the birdhouse any less useful, but if you didn't want the ridges, it would be a disappointment. If you were using a resist to make something like a beret, ridges such as these might really spoil the look. Once you've secured the decorative fibers on the surface, it's time to wet felt the birdhouse by rolling in the reed mat. I have a video on the next page that shows you how to do a complete roll. Now this video was made for another class, but you roll in the same way. The project in that video is square and our birdhouse is not square. Plus, the birdhouse has those long dangly ties at the top. You really don't need to worry too much about the ties. Just keep them out of the way of the birdhouse proper when you're rolling everything up and when you unroll and reposition the birdhouse 90 degrees, take a moment to just separate the ties from one another and then continue with the rolling. In this video, we're going to start doing the rolling. I put on the bubble wrap, I roll up the bamboo reed mat. I'm going to secure it with rubber bands. Now actually I have a bit too much soap again. Seems to be something I do and I did uh, add more water at the sink and let it drain through. Um, this is how you roll completely uh, from the palms up to the forearms. So you're doing a complete roll back and forth, back and forth. Uh, and you can do it 20 times, you can do it 30 times, I mean you can do it as many times as you want. You just want to try and always do the same amount of rolling when you change the direction of the piece. As you'll see in a moment, I'm going to uh, open this back up and when the piece is revealed you'll see that instead of being a square shape it is uh, more rectangular because fiber shrinks in the direction that you're rolling that you're agitating and I'll turn the piece 90 degrees I'm going to get rid of the tool at this point replace the plastic wrap and then roll it up again and do more rolling Hot water encourages the felting process. It's a good idea to refresh the hot water as you work and it's very easy to do just by holding that secure roll under the faucet long enough for hot water to heat the fibers again. Let excess water drain out the other end. You can squeeze it a little and then start rolling again. For the first sets of rolls, you'll be rolling from the bottom up to the top of the birdhouse. Roll 20 or 30 times with the birdhouse in this position. Unroll the reed mat and turn the birdhouse 90 degrees so that this time you'll be rolling from side to side. And just put those long ties out of your way within the bubble wrap as shown. Roll up everything and secure with rubber bands and roll the same number of times you did when you were rolling from the bottom to the top. Flip the piece over 
and roll again from bottom to top and then from side to side. This helps to try and keep the shrinkage of the fibers uniform. After rolling for a while, you'll notice that the resist is buckling inside the fibers. When that is obvious, it's time to cut a small slit. Cut a small slit just large enough to allow you to remove the foam resist. You can always make this slit wider if needed, but you can't easily make it smaller. This slit should be positioned as shown by the red line in the image, or maybe just a little bit higher. Placing it there will help prevent rain entering into the hole. Remove the resist through the slit you created. Rub the neck of the birdhouse where the ties emerge at the top vigorously between your fingers and palm. Wad up the birdhouse and the ties. Dunk it into hot water with a little bit of dish soap and then roll it in your hands as if you were making a meatball. This is called palming. Toss the birdhouse hard into your sink. Whack! Repeat palming and whacking until your piece is nicely fulled. The birdhouse should be about seven inches tall, not including the ties. When you are happy with the size of your birdhouse, rinse it well in cold water. Soak it for 15 minutes in a solution of water and vinegar. That would be about a tablespoon of vinegar to a quart of water. The vinegar will help to remove any traces of soap, and it's very important to remove all traces of soap. Any soap left in the fibers will make the birdhouse less water resistant. The vinegar also helps to restore the natural pH of the fiber. Rinse the birdhouse after soaking and wring out the excess water. Insert a balloon into the slit and blow it up as large as it will go. Then set your birdhouse aside to dry. You might tie it to your shower head or to a faucet so that the water that will drip off won't damage anything. I haven't quite decided whether or not it's a good idea to tie these birdhouses to a tree branch. If you do, tie it loosely but securely. You do not want to strangle the branch by tying too tightly. It may actually be a better choice to hang these birdhouses from hooks under the eaves of the house. The birdhouses are surprisingly durable, but in a sheltered location, which many birds prefer, they will have an additional protection from the elements and from squirrels. Small versions of the birdhouse combined with small craft birds would make great Christmas tree ornaments. If you were to decide to do that, I think you should omit felting in ties and just sew a loop or a bow at the top instead. Twenty-five small birdhouses could actually make a pretty interesting advent calendar. You would, could place small toys or wrapped candy in each for a child to open on each Advent day. Wet felting with a resist offers many creative possibilities. These are two experiments that I have done with resist wet felting. The vessel on the left was wet felted over an inflated balloon. The small purse on the right was wet felted over a flat resist and then folded, cut, and stitched to make this tiny purse. It isn't as well done as I would like, but for my first wet felted purse experiment, it was very educational. Questions? Need help? To email me a question directly, hover your cursor over this up arrow. This will open up the menu options above. Click on Questions and Answers 
and I will answer your question as quickly as possible. Thank you for taking my wet felting with a resist birdhouse class. I hope you enjoyed it and that the birds in your yard will enjoy the product of your efforts. For Craft Art EDU, this is Harlan. If you enjoyed this class, you might enjoy my Nuno Felted Eyeglass Case class, which is another beginner's wet felting class. Be sure to check out my other craft EDU classes in needle felt and in oil painting.